Did you know that in your body there are two trillion cells dividing each day? That's why regulation of the cell cycle is important. But Twips, what is the cell cycle? The cell cycle is the series of events that lead to two daughter cells and in particular the R point determines whether the cell continues into the cell cycle. It is at this phase which is most controlled by external factors. Oh, I see. But what controls this R point, Schwartz? Retinoblastoma protein regulates the R restriction point, hence determining whether the cell will continue on into the S phase. Could you tell me more about this important regulator, Schwartz? Let's start with how PRB works normally. In a normal resting or G0 phase cell, RB protein is hyperphosphorylated and it binds to E2F transcription factor while cyclin D levels are low. Ah, I see. So from what I already know, external growth factors increase cyclin D levels, forming more CDK4-6 cyclin D complexes. This complex increases in number and directly phosphorylates RB protein. Hyperphosphorylation of RB protein causes it to inactivate this release E2F to transcribe genes for the G1S phase transition. And one target for E2F is to increase the transcription of cyclin E gene. This increases cyclin E in the cytoplasm and forms complexes with CDK2. Thus, by limiting the amount of RB protein or causing effective RB protein that does not bind to E2F, E2F is constantly free to bind to genes that promote the G1S phase transition. Therefore, E2F provides an unlimited growth signal that leads to cancer. Since you know how the dysregulation in the cell cycle can lead to cancer, let's have a closer look at a disease that can cause defects, the RB. HPV! As I can recall, HPV is mostly known for its predisposition to cervical cancer, yet it is the E7 subunit of HPV that causes cancer. And the E7 can bind to RB, thereby disrupting the binding of E2F to RB. The unbound E2F will then bind to promoters and upregulate genes that control the cell cycle activation, proliferation, and gene transcription. Therefore, HPV E7 is an example of an oncogene which acts through sustaining a proliferative signal. However, even though the HPV works through this hallmark, high proliferation caused by E2F limits the cell of being able to perform other regulatory checkpoints and reduces nucleotide pools needed for DNA replication. This predisposes to missegregation and DNA strand breaks to genes controlling other hallmarks. This shows how HPV can transform a cancer cell with one hallmark to an aggressive cancer cell with several hallmark defects. Unfortunately, we have come to a close. Don't forget to tune in next time on The Circle of Life.